All right. Let's make lemonade. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Netflix Explorers podcast, where we bring these movies to you and dump them out over a koi pond from the AT90 Studios. My name is Dale. From the Sterling 1890 Studios, where it's looking very pristine in the hallways. New janitorial staff working out great. My name's Adam. And my name's Patrick, and I wore two different socks on purpose. Today we're going over Middleman, the ornithologist, and good people. Please stick around. Guys, we are sans Papa Steve for the record number of weeks in a row. What do you guys think? We're just looking at each other like the old days. Do we pour a glass of old granddad? Old, old granddad out for I don't know. I don't so know. why are you wearing two different socks? Well, I did it on purpose. Fashion statement? Uh, Diversity? I couldn't find my other sock. Oh, that's... that's. I, I don't think that was my a, hand. I don't think that's really on purpose. That's not purpose. That's well, just, yeah, uh, I knowingly put two different socks on. So okay. I intentionally didn't. You know, all through like grade school and high school, I had two different color shoelaces all the time. I remember that. That was pretty hip. That was my thing. Now the kids are doing it like crazy. And then you made like duct taped shoes. Yeah, I made duct taped shoes. but And duct tape wallets. Yeah, you got a duct tape wallet too. You can make a lot of things out of duct tape. What can't you do? And then Flex, what is that guy, Flex Seal? Or what is it? What's that guy who can? Yeah, yeah, Flex Seal. Flex Seal came along in my duct tape. can work in a canoe. Yeah, my <laughs> duct tape dreams went down the duct tape drain. You know what I mean? You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So Adam, what's going on, man? How are you? Good, dude. Good. D- uh, you're back as docket master. I think you were last week, but uh, did uh, was there any reason why you went after these ones? We got the middleman. We got uh, ornithologist. Ornithologist. Yes. Um, and then good people. What was your dice roll or what? Uh, well, ornithologist got some good reviews. It looked uh looked like it was it was a new to Netflix, up and coming. I was like a lot of people were liking it, so I thought I put that on. Okay. Uh, good people. It had uh. James Franco in it. I was like, James Franco? I like James Franco. Let's see. Uh, hmm. I think we have another movie with James Franco coming up next week, too. Okay. So, a little James Franco vibe there. We haven't done a good one with him in a while, so I figured that'd be good. We got to get him in rotation. Right. And then uh, Middleman, I thought just, I, I enjoyed the premise. I thought the premise sounded interesting, mm-hmm. and I kind of wanted to see which direction it went. Okay. Uh, Patrick, before we begin, I have to look at your shirt. It's a wonderful green color. Just a just a hat tip to your Did, Irish heritage. Can can you read it? It says I heart tank four thirty two. And does it fit no one but you? It's just I know. It fits very well. It's the Patrick podcast it shirt. Not of only history. fits with the words, but like right in the armpits, it fits very nice. Yeah. You know what? You just throw sh- it in the wash a couple of times. It'll shrink up on you. <laughs> yeah, your armpits will be tight in no time. Uh, also, shirts are available for purchase at the 1890studios.com. Yeah, 1890studios.com uh, backslash merch will be there. Um, as Patrick quickly rushes to link said, it to some sort of red bubble site. I said it on the podcast, so. You have to do it now. That is pod- <laughs> <laughs> That's podcast law. Patrick's rushing. We said merch. M E R C H. Right next to the pre order for the yeah. book. Right. Shit. Actually, we're looking for donations for the book, actually. We need, uh, he's crowd, uh, Patrick's crowdsourcing the publisher. So he wants to self publish, but we need the money to publish it. Milo won't call me back, so. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Not your type. Uh, Let's move quickly along, guys. First one up, I've decided, is Middleman. What do we got in the notes here? Sir Patrick, 5.8 IMDb, crime, comedy, drama, 104-minute runtime. Uh, before the trailer, let's just let's give you guys a taste. Uh, discovering a stash of cash in their dead tenant's apartment. That's not no, correct at all. No, you screwed up. No, I didn't screw up. Somebody else <laughs> copied and pasted the <laughs> description. No, uh, well, then I'll just describe it. Middleman yeah. is about a guy who wants to be a stand-up comedian in Las Vegas. Or he's, he's going to um, the, what is the show he's going to try to appear on? To get uh, a, Marvin show or uh, something? Something like that. Something I've never heard of. Um, yeah. But anyway, he's going down to be, he wants to be a stand-up comedian. So he's following his dreams and crazy, crazy things ensue. Hit it at him. Sorry about your loss. Look for me on television. His mom dies. She leads him a uh, 53 Chevy. Today I've been given another chance. Actually, it's an old know exactly what I have. Is it really? Get out yeah. of the car there, Pilgrim. 
I am a stand-up comedian. You ain't no stand-up. Not yet, but I'm on my way to Las Vegas for the Monty Guy auditions. Monty's Monty guy. speeding officer? <laughs> hey, how about you open for me? Oh, oh. Destiny's calling. It's time to get up there and shake your stuff. Welcome to the stage, Lenny Freeman. Better Call Saul get meets the, the Coen brothers? Suck. That's an interesting take. You yeah. can be my manager, Hitch. I don't enter into contracts lightly. So he picks up he picks now up please, a hitchhiker. Right. Stop oh, me if you heard this one before. Who's obviously has bad intentions. Right Listen now. to the music. Don't surprise me. Nobody ever leaves this place. What seems to be troubling you? I have never been in trouble. And now I'm in the worst kind of trouble ever. No, oh, you ain't, Lenny. Yes, Lenny. I am, Hitch. No, you ain't, Lenny. Oh, now you are. He appears to be sawing a body. Open the truck! There's only one way on our contract. This is insane! Do it! Middle man. Good. So that's Middleman. Um, that trailer really took you for a ride. I mean, it came up, the you know music came in, da 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 da, and you can tell it took quite a turn. Um, now, Patrick, due to Gertrude and you know her lack of email ability and uh, you know just general knowledge at all, you did not watch any of these movies. Yeah, that's accurate. I so. Know, uh... The people that we hired, they they just don't have the concept of Google calendars down just yet. Right. So, I mean, this one got scheduled for tomorrow, but I guess I got left out of the email chain mm -hmm. that we moved it to today. So I was planning on uh, just slamming them all out tonight. Binging them up. True Patrick yeah. fashion. But uh, kind of dropped the ball. Well, we'll see how Donna works out now. Yeah, so. we're, we're, we're in talks. We She's not full-time yet, but she's, uh, she's watching over Gertrude's shoulders, hopefully – is going to pick up a little more than Gertrude did, but Donna's Donna's promising. Yeah. But Adam, do you watch this one? I did. Okay. Um, well, what do you think, man? Uh, what, uh, what can we tell? I mean, how do we dive into this one? Can we give a little of the story away? Yeah. Or so what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go down a road. Yeah. And then if I'll divert if you need to. Exactly. Um, so the lead character, he's uh, if you, any of you guys watch Parks and Rec, he's Jerry from Parks and Recreation. I, that guy looked familiar in the trailer. Yes. I thought it was a guy from Office Space, but now that you're saying Jerry. So he plays kind of a similar Jerry guy who's kind of like kind of a doof, kind of. Right. He's not very funny, but he wants to be a stand-up comedian. He's kind of like a nervous ball of just <laughs> nervous energy, kind <laughs> right. of a dork. Sure. And uh, everyone, I wrote down everyone in the movie is funny around him except for him. Sure. Which is like, I, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. And uh, so he's going to Vegas to be a stand-up comedian, and he's not funny, but he likes old time humor tapes like that's his right like, old radio shows he's like, and... oh my mom his mom died he's like oh my mom thought i was funny so i'm gonna go try to pursue my dreams right and he's just like gonna see he's like an accountant and then he's yes. gonna go try to do this so he picks up a hitch hitchhiker and he gets into some trouble with this guy right uh kind so, of a shady character kind of a shady character and then uh he kind of the hitchhiker and him enter in a contract and he tries to help a very the, loose and yes. non-binding. This is over like a cup of coffee at a diner, you know, right in the middle of whatever, somewhere between somewhere in Las Vegas. So hijinks ensue, and let's just say that. Uh, well, I'll just and say hijinks, it. to put it lightly. Well, they kill a guy. Yes. Or the uh, the guy plays Jerry kills a guy. Right. And he's covered in blood, and then he has to go to he. The guy's like, "Come on, let's go do stand up right now." Right. That this local bar, like everybody, you know, if you want to get anywhere in Vegas, you start here, like yeah. at this little podunk bar. So he goes there, like all covered in blood. He gets up on the stage. And he's he super. He's super nervous because he just killed somebody a second like, ago. He's like a guy that heckled me at my show last night. I killed him, and everyone's like, "Ha ha ha ha!" ha. Because he did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like, and he's like. You think it's hard to get rid of a body these days. And everyone's like, ha, 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 this guy's hilarious. Yeah, but <laughs> he just tells a story about how he, like, killed the guy and tried to hide his body. And everyone's just laughing. And he's, like, sitting there like, I can't believe this right. is working. So everyone thinks he's, like, a gimmick comic with it, with this. Like, yeah, the blood. Ha, ha, that's funny. But, like. Yeah. So then the movie kind of takes turns from there. And he there's a love interest. And. Um, right. It's just, a, it's kind of, it's very dark humor, obviously. But. Right, it is very dark humor. Yeah, and as you're saying, Adam, it's a, it's it's uh, 
hijinks ensue does not even put a uh, just doesn't even touch on the surface. This thing gets the things that he gets into and the characters that it just are so happenstance. It gets so incredibly wild. And let's not forget the last five minutes where it. it oh, oh. I, you just kind of watch it. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely wild. But there's some good one-liners. Like, he goes to a breakfast, and the waitress is like, what do you want? He's like, uh, can, I get some, can I get some eggs? And she's like, no, I don't want your sperm. Yeah, no, like, no. And she's, she's like, <laughs> and she's like, that's funny. Yeah. Why aren't you laughing? <laughs> How hilarious. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I'm a stand-up comedian. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so everybody he ran into is pretty funny. And it, it, uh, he was trying to, like, battle against and take the girl of... Mm. the like the town's like funniest guy yeah. whose jokes were just so bad yeah. like anyway it was it was a it was a cool setup it was a uh i don't know it was it kept me there but i didn't really I ultimately know. i didn't like it i didn't really like it either um i don't know if i just didn't like the characters or something like that it was pretty well written and it looked okay but just the story had me kind of had me kind of going, and I was like, meh, meh, meh. And then the last five minutes, I was like, okay, this may be one of, like, this could move up into my top 20 just because of the ending. Just how it flipped 95% of the movie around. I could tell, like, it it sets up for a big, like, joke at the end. Right. And that's, like, the whole yeah. premise of the movie. And, jo- like- and joke, Adam's not giving anything away with joke. That's a very broad term, and it's very <laughs> interesting. Uh, Patrick, hearing uh, what we're saying, you got any questions? Or you got any we, as a listener, as a podcast listener out there, do you have any? What do you, do you get? What would you ask us um, if you got anything? If not, what would be the runtime on this? Uh, I don't know. It Looks like 104 minutes. It's about yeah. No. Is it a? Or, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That makes is sense. Is it a quick one for? Or is it? Uh, can, it's, if you're it on can. board with the story and it sticks with you, yeah. But if you're like me, it felt long because it's just like. I don't know. The stuff he got himself into, like, yes, I know the character's dopey, and we're supposed to, you know, yeah, in his story, he starts off as a dope, and he's a dope through the whole thing. So if you expect so much out of him, you're going to be disappointed. But that made a drag for me. The last half hour, I tried to fast forward through it just to get done with it, and I was like, okay. But then I got to the end, I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I got to go back and watch it. Just yeah. Like, yeah. At that point. Yeah. But, it's um, definitely wild towards the end. Yeah. But. I don't know. Other than that, we'll tell tell you what. Let's let's dip into uh, recommend and rewatchability, and then Patrick, you'll tell us what you think about what we've heard. I guess just thus far, Adam, looking at you, rewatch recommend, man. I'd probably say no and no. Okay, I don't think there's a lot there for you. Yeah. Uh, if you like Jerry from Parts of Wreck, it gives you like a ha. That's Jerry. He's playing the same kind of guy, but it's it's not as funny as Parts and Wreck because. Like what they do to him in Parks and Rec is just ridiculous. <laughs> okay, and it's it's like it's one of the funniest gags on that show. Nice. Um, but he plays the same kind of character. Uh, but just I don't know. He it just he tries. I like that he tried to do something new, and he went out and this is a very different film. I think that's probably the best part about it. It's right. just very different. Yeah. It's a it's not a it's a comedy, but it's also kind of dark. It's if you like dark humor, you probably would like this movie. Sure. Yeah, I, I would I would say the same thing. Do I got to watch it again? No, I don't think so. Um, will I recommend it? Yeah, if you want an off the wall movie with like a very bizarre story and dark, like a dark humor story with a quite a twist ending. I thought it was going to be, I'll do a minor spoiler. I thought the whole time the hitchhiker was going to be in his mind, like a Fight Club okay. kind of thing, but that wasn't true. Okay. So he's real. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so I mean, I would recommend it to somebody like if you want like an esoteric film that's I don't know dark and kind of funny and esoteric, esoteric. What did I say? Isoteric. Eso. Esoteric. Eso. Is it, is it eso. 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 It's an e. It's it Greek. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's part of our dialect, you know. So what do you got? What do you got? Recommend? So I will. I'll, I mean, I'll recommend it to somebody who's into that, but I won't rewatch it. Uh, Patrick, are we talking into it? Or are we? Were we talking you out? No, going off of what I saw in the trailer and going off of the dark humor aspect, I think I'm uh, all on board for this. I think I'm going to have to make time tomorrow to watch this. Okay. Well, good. There we go. We got our first sell. Yep. Uh, uh, take me down to the liquor store aisle, Dale. Oh, I will do that. Um, Middleman, what do I got? To, okay, I have uh, my drink is uh, Coke with no rum. Um, <laughs> I don't like Coca Cola at all. I don't really like dark pops. I don't really like any pops unless they're uh, it's ginger ale with some scotch. Um, 
So Coke to me, it's like, hey, man, you want a Coke? I guess. You want to watch this one? I guess. You want to watch it again? You want another Coke? No. No, I don't think so. But I appreciate it, you know. So it's like, yeah, it's a Coke. Yeah. Thanks meh. for trying. Yeah, it's like a heavy meh. Uh, yeah. Adam, what about you? Bring us down. I get, I put down warm gin. Oh, boy. <sighs> oh, no. It was rough. Oh, that's terrible. This one time I was I was hanging out with my ex-girlfriend's older brother. Okay. And he, I think I was like 19, and he bought, he was older, so he bought us a bottle of gin. He's like, yeah, let's drink some gin, hang out, you know. I was trying to bond with him, you know, trying to right. trying to get a relationship. But so I had to struggle through the gin, just like I had to struggle through this movie, just to appease, you know. But that's appease the cast. I would never do it again, right? You know, no, just one and done. Makes perfect and sense. Done, that's it. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's go on to our next one. This is uh, I don't even know what we're going to talk about. This one. This is the ornithologist Adam. I don't know if you're going to be able to. Dude, no, we don't need to play the trailer. Well, I so mean, I think it's all in uh, Portuguese anyway. So I was like, I barely skimmed this one. And then I came over to Dale. I was like, uh, I came over to the 1890s early just so I could uh, get the get the effect of Ornithologist. And then Dale just, we watched the movie on Fast Forward and Dale narrated it to me. Right. Which is probably the best way to watch a bad movie. <laughs> it's, yeah. It was just. Because was... I put myself through this uh uh, what is it? 117 minutes. It felt I was like, like 117 I, I, hours. We're, we're we're watching on fast forward. It probably took like 15 minutes, and like <laughs> I was like, "You watched this whole thing," and he was just like, "Yeah, I did. I had to do it." Like, okay, here's the thing. I admire. I just want to say I admire your dedication. He, and you know what? I'm going to steal a line for Papa Steve here. He always he said Tank 432 was Great a movie. was a car wreck that like never really crashed. Like it's a car wreck waiting to happen, and it never really crashed. That's what this movie is. You're waiting, like, we got potential. Visually beautiful. You know, I, I don't know about characters, but like, all right, I, you got me on board. You sold me. Now sell it, you know, finish the deal for me. Well, he, you, okay, so a guy. Kept me on the line. Yeah, okay, no, tell about the story. I'm sorry. No, you just break down the home. We'll just blow this We're thing gonna wide open. We're going to blow this thing wide open. I'm Ooh. going, I think, guys, I mean, and I don't want to maybe go on record here. And so it's on record. But I may... Be getting one of my first spoiler awards. Spoiler mantles. Spoiler mantles. Well, I'll put it right up on the shelf next to my hundred okay, and your yeah. two. All right, I'm going to do. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, I'm going to run through this one rapid fire. Adam, you, I did a rapid fire with you earlier this evening. Back me up if I got anything wrong, gotcha. Patrick. I'm going to sell you on this one. Not sell you, dissuade you. Hopefully. So it starts off, uh, Ornithologist is, of course, a bird study Bird watcher. Bird watcher. Okay. So this guy is in the in South America somewhere looking for this certain type of stork bird thing. So he's out there by himself in the backwoods. He's all self, you know, he's in the middle of nowhere. So he's in the, the backcountry. So he's going, going, going in his uh, kayak. Kayak goes down some rocks, crashes. Um, cut to two Chinese women that are... Uh, backpacking, they uh, find his body, but first uh, she has a cut on her knee, and she, uh, one of the women wipe it with her hand, and it's bloody, and then offers it to the other Chinese woman who licks the blood off her hand, and then gets down on her knees and start licking the blood off of her knee. Weird. Stumble upon his body, he, uh, not his body, his his passed out body, in uh, you know on the shoreline. So pull him up, get him back. You know they're around the campfire. Oh, where are you guys from? Okay, it's a nice story, but I'm still rattled because she just licked the blood off the knee. So okay, this is a normal conversation around the campfire. Okay, guys, good night. We'll see you in the morning. He wakes up in the morning. He's tied up in his underwear, like total hog tie by like a hundred feet of rope, like. Every it's not just like his wrists are tied. It's incredible. He's just professionally hog tied up, completely immobilized, completely immobilized. And they come back and they come back with firewood and this and this and this. And they're like, "All right, we're gonna um, we're gonna castrate you and then we're gonna eat you and kill you." Maybe in that order. I'm not sure. Couldn't understand. But anyway, I'm like, "What is going on? This is crazy." They're like, "All right, we'll be back tonight to eat you." I'm like. What this like the first twenty minutes of this was just a nice nature film. Why are we going into this? Okay, so the evening comes. They're going to eat him in the morning. He gets out. Okay, so he runs for it. He gets away from the Chinese chicks. So he goes. He finds. He stumbles upon like a uh, like some weird uh, ritualistic uh, campground. Yes, it looks his canoe. His broken canoe is upside down. 
like going straight up out of the ground and there's like stakes around it. It's like a it's like a weird moon circle. I don't right. Know. And there's skulls, like animal skulls on all the stakes and stuff like all that. All his stuff is split is scattered around this area. So like, obviously somebody's doing some weird seance stuff. So he a, after he escapes from the Chinese chicks there, he at night they're like all dancing around it all in this weird garb and like doing this crazy dance. This is not the Chinese chicks. This no, is this like is a just tribe. A tr- yeah, but like a crazy whatever and they're going like they're yelling like, "Get drunk! Come on, keep drinking, keep drinking!" All in this like weird language. It's all weird. Guy pees off the edge of a rock. He's trying to hide from him. The guy pees like right above him, all over him, which is very and all male genitalia is exposed to the world in urinating, which is something uh, you know you don't see in movies on Netflix very often. Yep. I mean, you know, House of Cards. Does that have? That? I don't know. Sure. Anyway, so uh, you know, the sun rises. He like moves through there. Sun rises, and uh, he wakes up on a beach. And he wakes up to a goat herder coming by, and the opening shot is a goat herder directly suckling off the teat of a goat. Uh, you know, uh, the I don't know if you call them like udders of the goat, but either way, it doesn't matter. Goat milk, rich in vitamin D. That's what I'm hearing. So anyway, he gets up and he's like, "Hey, man, where am I at? You know, who are you? Where's the nearest town? What's going on?" And the guy's deaf and dumb. So anyway, he's like, "Man, that's weird." And so the deaf and dumb guy gives him some food and some water, and then strips completely naked and runs into the river. Menagetalia is way out. Oh, there. it's all it's all out there, and every minute of it. So there, he's out in the water, beckoning the you know the this ornithologist. Am I right? Yes. Uh, he's out there. I'm going to keep asking you that. Yes. Um, so he's just like, yeah, come out into the water. And he's like, no, come out in the water, no. And he finally goes like, okay, boom, full nude, hops right into the into the water. Anyway, they're up on the beach for a long time, complete view, um, talking about... Uh, they're still laying, laying on their backs, dongs out. Just straight up on the beach. And then he goes, he sees the stork he's been after. So he gets out his binocs, takes a look at the uh, at the stork, and then you know scoots over by the other guy and says, hey, look through my binocs, and do you see that stork over there? And, and then he like straddles him from behind and holds the you know, uh, the binocs up to his eyes. And then they just start making out, these two guys. And then they start male bonding on the uh, on the beach. <laughs> they went full bro- broke back. It was broke back for a large number of minutes. Yes. And I'm like, okay, what is going on here? I see your face, Patrick, on the live feed. People are seeing it. Okay, so they're, you know, finished. Uh, and they, uh, you know, they're... Uh, they're getting all dressed and stuff. He's like, all right, man, well, I'm going to get going on. I'm still, you know, trying to get home. And the guy's like, no, you can't leave. But, you know, again, he's trying to explain this to him. And the, the the goat herder pulls a knife. And he's like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? They get into a little tussle. Boom, he kills the goat herder. He takes the knife from him and stabs him and right in the side. And stabs him right in the side. Dies. Okay, takes his jacket, takes his knife, takes his, uh, his whistle to, like, direct the goats, his dog that directs the goats. So he walks, and he's kind of like, it's all getting psychological. It's all getting weird colors and weird shots. Birds are, like, following him. He goes through a place where there's a bunch of stuffed animal, like, stuffed uh, you know, uh, it's taxidermy. Like, it's like fake animals, like jaguars. But it's like taxidermy animals. It's yes. like he's walking through a fake... giraffes, elephants. He's walking through this wood, and it's all trippy music. It's all trippy shots. Obviously, you know, I don't know what you make of it. He just killed somebody, so his mind's going crazy. Yeah. He, so he's walking, and he stumbles like on the, like this to this temple, and he goes to this temple, and he takes out his ID and stuff, and he he burns his ID and throws it down, you know, in the water. Has a long conversation with these koi fish. Um, and then burns his fingers off, like burns his fingerprints off. He's like, I want to become a new person, blah, blah, blah. Then it cuts to a horn blowing off. It's three topless women on horseback that are hunting, and they a lot of galloping shots of topless women uh, during their hunt. So he stumbles upon this guy. He's like, what's going on? And I'm wondering the same thing. Um, they're like, all right, we'll come back to town with us, and we'll make sure you're all good to go. And he's like, no, I'm a new man. i got to just keep walking. And they're like, "That's you should not stay out here any longer." He's like, "No, I got to keep going." And so then this dove starts following all over the place. Dove, or, the dove f- flies into his tent, uh, broken wing, tries to fix it. Boom! It, it it leaves during the middle of the night. Okay, that's weird. So he he he's walking, he's walking, just nowhere, and it like ends up changing the character. Like the actual actor now has changed people. It's yes. a different actor. Yeah. Anyway, stumbles upon one of the people that were in that dancing circle of fire. Uh, with, like, the big bird suit, you know, during that crazy party thing. And he pulls the mask off. First of all, after he lifts his shirt, he finds the wound 
that he stabbed the goat herder with. Pulls the mask off. It's the goat herder. He's no, like, but the wound. So he's got a knife wound in his side, like how he killed that one guy. There's a good one minute shot of him taking two fingers and sticking it into the knife wound and going all around and it's going all around. It's like a it's literally a one minute shot of this guy fingering a knife wound in a guy. Dude, really weird. And so anyway, then he finally takes the mask off this guy. Boom. It's the guy that he killed the goat herder. Yes. So he's like, you know, uh, you know, do you remember me? And he's like, no, what are you talking about? I don't remember you. You know, my name is Tomas. And he's like, oh, you're not. The goat herder's name was Jesus. You're not Jesus? No. Jesus is. He's like, wait a second. You have the whistle around your neck. That's my brother. He was my better half. And it got all. Oh, you have my brother's knife. It got all metaphysical. And then he's like, yeah, I'm, you know, just trying to atone for what I. And then slice necks. Slices his throat right there. The main character. He slices the main character's throat. And he just is just like bleeding out, holding his neck. It's spurting. It shoots the dove that's right next to him. Yeah, blood's coming. Okay, and then and lots then it, of shots of the moon. And then it, the yeah, and then too. it tilts up through the trees to the moon. Holds on the moon for way too long. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it you know opens up to a scene in what was it Italy? Yeah, in Italy. So all of a sudden now we're in Italy, and it cuts to. The main character, who is now the new actor of the main character, the man in the bird suit, who is a different character of the goat herder. Yeah. And then you see the Chinese women across the street, and they're like, oh, hey. What was the guy's name? Antonio. Tony. Yeah. Like, hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. And he raises his hand like he's a priest and, like, crosses them from across a busy street. They go. They cross themselves, these Chinese women. He grabs hands with... Tomas or Jesus, whoever they are now, in the bird suit and start walking down a street and it they just walk all the way down as the credits roll, they, you know, walk out of sight. It is absolutely and it, it's absolutely inc- insane. It's insane. It's not incredible. I almost said that. It's incredibly insane. It's so dumb. It's so stupid. And you try to like we're on the Netflix Explorers. So we want to dive deep. We want to get you this info, but this is pure grade A garbage garbage i just can't understand this from like a <laughs> i think the most unbelievable part is that they'll watch the whole thing i was thinking <laughs> i was like with this being so bad this really needs to just be awesome later look how bizarre it is it can only pay off no 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 it's no. got a six five on imdb that is i can't believe it got a point five i know it's absolute trash it's in it's insane it's not even like oh man it's an art film man get over it no it's a garbage, it's a garbage piece of film. I, I love like the na- the women galloping topless on horseback, like just what? <laughs> like, yeah, no, like, and out when of I saw, When I saw that part, I was like, I was like, what the heck is going? Like this movie is it just it's just so bizarre. It's just I don't know how and you can not, even think of this. It's something not like this. even redeemingly bizarre. It's not like, hey, man. You know, it was really bizarre, but I like what you did. I like, I like what you. And it's so slow and awkward. It's t- and it was just, it was. I don't, I can't. And it's not nothing. You can't like get it. It's like, oh man, it's it's over my head. Must be too good for me. No, it's just not meant for normal IQ levels to absorb. <laughs> Honestly, it was like nothing I've ever seen. Patrick, your mouth is a gape. What are you thinking about this one? Is it crazy? Like. Like action crazy? No, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of like a movie that didn't make sense. Like, I, all roads lead back to Primer because like the first time I watched that, didn't oh make no, sense. no, 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 like, no. Well, Primer has like you know what they're going to do. Like you know the goal. It might get wild, mm-hmm. but you know the goal. This is you start off with bird watching, and then 20 minutes in, where it's off the rails. And this is why it's like a Tank 432 thing, where it's like that starts off, and you're like, huh. What's going on? Like, it's a war thing going on? And then it just goes to wherever it goes, and it's out of its own mind. That's where this one is. This is worse than Tank 432. So it's... It, I don't even know what else to say. I don't even... I want to break the NetX mold and forego rewatch and recommend. This might be the worst movie we've ever seen. I would say this is the worst movie I've ever watched in my entire life. I think it goes Ornithologist. Um, what was the movie with the Germans? And they were like... Taking uh, Earth? No. Well, Taking Earth. Yeah, probably Taking Earth number two. Number three was one with the Germans when they when she burned the painting. 
like under the bridge. Yeah, like they were, remember yeah. The, guy, the guys went. The Germans like uh, invaded. Your, uh, yeah, it was like UK alternate universe oh. stuff. I forget that. That yeah, was I not as. I mean, that was pretty bad. But that's number three. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe Tank Four Thirty Two is number three. Come but on, yeah, definitely the worst one we've seen so far. It was. It was. I am upset at myself. I don't know why I spent the time. I, I I'm feel, glad you did. You brought I, you brought the you br- you explored. I mean, did was my description okay, Adam? I run through. No, you I miss anything. You nailed it. You nailed it perfectly. It I was, don't think. Well, uh, hey, you know, exploring is not always glorious. So it's not. Look at Ernest Shackleton. Yep. Yeah. Or don't he's dead. Or well, yeah. I mean, you could look at our logo and see Ernest Shackleton too. But anyway, let's just bypass it. Do you got a drink written down? I mean, I know you. We just kind of did a run through on it. Um, but goat milk, maybe. Okay. From the udder. Um. I uh this is what I have written down for this one is it's like some sort of like not like an Irish car bomb. I don't even want those flavors associated with this bad of a movie. This is like an a, a car you like do a car bomb type uh drink where you drop like a your know, shot glass into a bigger glass, but then let's just say the glasses are empty and but you have a shot glass and an empty glass and you take the big glass and you shove it into your face <laughs> so that the shot glass comes out and busts your teeth out. That's how bad this one is. It is painful, just like that shot glass, removing your front teeth. So um, it, 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 people die. It, Netflix, if you're listening, please remove this it, it, and and just it replace it with Tank 432. I'll take it. <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, after I'm, I'm all frazzled, man. That was the excellent breakdown. Hopefully we can bring it back with our last one. This is uh, Good People 2014 film. Uh, 5.59 dB, and then let's read this description. Discovering a stash of cash in their dead tenant's apartment, the couple in debt take a, take the money and find themselves a target of a deadly adversary. Uh, adversary. Ad, ad, oh. Well, it's adversary. It's, it's, like adversary. The Briti- it's like the British way. Oh, okay, right. uh, the thief. Who the stole Dunkirk. Um, hit it, Adam. Rated R. Millennium film. That's fine. I thought it was worth James it. Franco, Kate Hudson. They're in London. An ordinary like couple. Just got me a few days on a good job. Looking for the perfect I'm life. Start a family. You're so lucky to have him. And you're so lucky to have him. Tom Wright? Yeah. You're served. We're gonna lose the house. You're oh served. God. Ben, turn it down! Ben! They have a tenant downstairs, Ben. Who they find deceased. Dead. I can't believe he was down here the whole time. Yeah. What? They pull a, a backpack oh from the ceiling filled with money. 20,000 pounds. So what do we do? Detective John Holden. When you discovered the body, did you find anything else? The cops came. They didn't find anything. I say we just hide it and wait a week. Two weeks. The mortgage, credit cards. We use cash where we can. Just enough to keep the roof over our heads. This could be really bad money. I know. But what makes money bad? The people make it bad. Not the money. Is that Mr. Echo? What do with it? No. Okay. Hello? But he looks like a Mr. Echo. Behind the Pogo, there's always a monster guarding it. You're sure that's not Mr. Echo? crossed a very bad man. He's a lot less buff than Mr. Echo. What are we going to do, Tom? There is a way out. Look, we're in this. Maybe this money is a gift. He's going to get us killed. No heroics, no nothing. Tom Wilson said, great British actor. Yeah, he's awesome. Just remember, you brought this Omar Sky is his name. Is Mr. Echo's name. Get ready. Sorry, I got lost. Lots of action scenes. I never needed the house. All I needed was us. Good people. Good people. Sorry, I was uh, messing with the um, book of knowledge, trying to see if that was Mr. Echo, but it must have been a brother because it is definitely not him. So, um, 5-5 five, five, IMDb. Adam, you watch this? I did. Talk to me, brother. Yeah, so uh, James Franco, Kate Hudson, uh, a married couple. Pretty explanatory uh, trailer. Kind of down on their luck. Uh, they're pretty broke. Struggling. Uh, James Franco has a house that his grandmother, belated grandmother, left him, and he's trying to fix it up. 
Uh, he sinks a lot of money into it, unfortunately. And so they're trying to. There was he was trying to resell it or live there. I don't know what that was. Well, yeah, I think they bought it because I mean it was it's a super uh, dilapidated house. So I think they bought it super cheap. He said he spent half his, you know, money on half of everything he had on it, and right. it just wasn't shaping up and still unlivable. So the money's just running out. So he's just taking odd jobs. So they need money, and then they have a tenant downstairs who uh, dies, and they find all the money. And they're trying to, like, what do we do with it? And the cops come and say, hey, do you have anything in there? Like, the cop, uh, the detective the detective kind of knows he was a shady guy. He kind of, they kind of stumble into a big heroin ring, I would say, with a couple of yeah. rival gangs. The, trying ba- to get... the basement tenant was into that. Yeah. Well, the first, so, and then basically it's the, the, the movie is about them two trying to hang on to the money and, and evade the police and the gangs. Right. Um, because the gangs are paying off the police. Right. And the fir- I wrote down the first scene of this movie when the they show the, the money being stolen. Very cool scene. I, I wrote down it's like very Scorsese-esque. Yeah. Esque. Uh, like good action, mm-hmm. very dark, very gritty. I like the single. They did a one scene where it was like a single uh, camera. So they like would all ran into this place, I guess, yeah. to rob it. But like the camera just stayed and it was like real time. So you heard what was going on. We didn't see it because you're still outside, mm-hmm. and you heard him running around. I thought it was a real cool. So it was shot. like four guys who are a gang. They go try to steal the money from Mr. Echo, who's the other head of the other gang. So four guys go in there with guns blazing. <clears throat> they take the money. One guy comes out, kills one of his buddies. Right, takes the money. So they kind of he kind of just screwed them all. Yeah. Over. So that's the guy that dies in the basement with the money. So those guys are like, hey, I need. We were we were in that together. We want that money back, and then the guy that got the money stolen from him wants it back as right, well. Right. So that scene was very cool. Yeah, it set up a really good movie. And when James Franco finds the money, I'm thinking like, okay, dude, just take like twenty grand, throw it back, <clears throat> to tell the cops, hey, yeah, here it is, here it is. Look at that. That's down here too. Right. So problem solved. Right. Yeah. But no, Wrong. they gotta be selfish. Gotta be greedy. I mean, he's in a tough spot. Um. And that's what bugs me, too, a little bit about this one. James Franco's character is, I don't know, man. I just, James Franco was not the right guy for this role. He just. Which I, surprised me. I'm like, why, if James Franco does a movie these days, you would think it's going to be a good movie. Right. Right? And this is in the peak of, like, his new peak of. Uh, this came out 2014. Right. Yeah, I mean, I still see him as a Freaks and Geeks character, to be honest. But he's done some great movies. Yeah, he has, and he's a good actor when he has to be. I mean, um, 128 hours, right? Yes, that was. A, I mean, that was a great film. He did a great job. Everything was good. And I didn't think Kate Hudson was very good in here either. She's kind of like a chick flick kind of girl. I think it just didn't play. Like the emotions weren't at their max. They like wasn't picked for them. They did not fit like the notch. And I was with the characters. Until they did something stupid. I wrote that down. I'm like, I'm with these guys until they do something stupid. Right. And they start lying to each other, and they start spending money on stupid things that they shouldn't be spending money on, even right. though they said, hey, we'll just take what we need. Um, so I really, that really, like, I'm, I'm with, I know it's not a movie, and, and like, I don't know. I feel like when you're committing crime, you have to be smart. Stakes are high. The stakes are high. Right. The stakes are the highest they've ever been. Yeah. All right. I'm sure. You got to be smart. You mm-hmm. can't be stupid. Like, and people just like, I know it's not a movie unless you're, sp- I would like to see a movie where the people are really smart and things just, there's so many obstacles they have to overcome, but they're good at overcoming those obstacles. Right. These guys just kind of bumbled through it all. Yeah. They set these and, traps that never worked. And they're bumbling. <laughs> yeah, right. And they're bumbling people, like actors, they're, they're bumbling characters played by actors that shouldn't be in their role. I mean, it's kind of like a uh, uh, Owen Wilson in that um Pierce Brosnan one where they're in Thailand or whatever they're in. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, like yeah, you know, Owen Wilson. The yeah, Escape. He's, the Escape. Nice. Uh, it's, I mean, it's a good movie, but like Owen Wilson, is he really the right? Yeah, he's a good actor. He's just, he's a great actor, but is he right for this one? And it kind of rubbed me the whole way, you know, wrong the whole way, but this is the same thing with James Franco. Um, but anyway, the good points is the uh, detective. Yes. Loved his character. He kind of knew. I mean, he was kind of like a rogue because, uh, you know, the police are bought by the yeah. mob. So he was kind of a rogue. He's still like a legit cop. And you love that shining light. He's kind of like a Scorpio kind of figure. You, or you, 
What's that movie? Yeah, Scorpio. Well, he's like a he's like a like a, a beacon of light in like this terrible to situation. So he's like the one person they can trust when you know holding on this money just really you know throws everything off and everybody's against him. So he he played a really cool character. And you know I watched this one a while ago and I watched it again last night for the cast and I you know I really liked it. I mean. I fast forwarded through the beginning because I remember I watched it and I turned it off because I didn't like it. Revisited it again and I'm like, this is not terrible. The actors rubbed me the wrong way, and I don't think they were right for the role. But the overall story is, you know, they are bumbling. But the story itself could has promise. I and guess. everybody in the movie gets one life, so everybody gets like shot, but and they're, they're come not, back, but they're not dead. Yeah. <laughs> like they come back. Like <laughs> right. those are the twists. Like he got shot, but he's not dead. Oh my god. Yeah, and it's it like, happens. Yeah, it happens uh, pretty like, much like four or five times. Yeah, and so I said, everyone in the movie gets a life. Yeah, you get one redo. Yeah. You get yeah. one spawn. You get right. to spawn again <laughs> once. <laughs> right. <laughs> like. Yeah. So that's what it's like. Uh, but I mean, you want to do a rewatch and a recommend, or what do you want to do? Sure. Um, I'll. I would say rewatch. Uh, I would just say barely a no. I mean, like I said before, I watched it. Um. A couple months ago, maybe a year, or maybe more ago, um, and I didn't really like it. And I watched it again. Dedication to the cast. Had to watch it again, and I was like, you know what? The, I just watched this uh, Ornithologist movie, and you know what? This one isn't that bad. You know, it makes <laughs> sense, even though it's you know the bumbling characters and uh, the actual actors may be out of place. You know what? Maybe I will give this a hint, a taste of rewatchability because I did. Uh, recommendation, uh, it's it's uh, it's vac act. I mean, it, you kind of need to watch to pay attention to the character. So maybe it's not a vac act, but it's definitely a light, a light watch. It's not easy action, but it's just, it's just not very. Doesn't bring. It's not just full of depth like you'd think a story like this would be. Yeah, there's still there's a lot of plot holes that I don't understand why they did certain things. Right, like. So so it doesn't engage you. So it's but it's not a vacuum. Yeah, I I kind of I kind of watched it with uh with with an at arm's length. Okay. I didn't get into it. And a Chelsea uh, game on the other arm. <laughs> I'm sure. I wish, yeah. So but yeah, they were just it I just kept it at arm's length. I didn't it didn't move me. I didn't I didn't want to get drawn in to get moved. It was just so I don't think I would rec- recommend it actually. Okay. I don't think I'd watch it again or recommend it. Okay. Patrick, we've been we've been what do you what do you call it? Chewing our jaw over here? What is it? What is it with your jaw? Back? I don't think that's a saying at all. No, what is it like a jibber jabbing jaw? Jibber jabberish? We've been we've been jabbing our jaw over here. What do you think, well, yeah. man? Would you, does this the idea of it? Do we explain the story good enough or what? Yeah. So I I like Franco. You ever seen the movie Homecoming with Franco and Statham? Jason no. Statham? No. No. He kind of plays like a, a seedy under guy, and I was like, oh, I thought that's what. Uh, the good people are going to be like, I thought Franco was going to be bad, but if I know he's like chaotic good throughout the movie until he gets the money. He's not chaotic good. He's like uh, survival good. Oh. He's just a, you know, he's rebuilding this old house and a line he uses is like, well, I'm really glad I got my master's degree as he's like <laughs> trying to, you know, cut wood and build these things. Yeah. So he's like just kind of like a. You know, just, I don't know. He's not chaotic. Loose, but not yeah, falling he's, apart. He's just kind of dopey. I mean, again, this is like an Owen Wilson in The Escape. He's not meant to be an action hero. Yeah, he, it, he just as a survivalist, If basically. I had to pick out of the three movies that you recommended this week, or that we you I didn't watch this week. <laughs> right. It, the way you guys describe the ornithesiologist, I think I'd, I'd rather watch that one to see how bad it is than to see like a mediocre film like this. I'm telling you, <sighs> that know, is a terrible decision. Yes, it is such a way. I mean, you got to do a fast, do it a 15 minute fast forward check in, 50. But you miss the depth of how terrible it is because of how long that movie like tries to be artistic. Yeah, it, but I feel like the good people is just like you're you're describing it like it's a completely average movie. Yes, I agree and with that. I I don't want average. I want I want you want either end of the spectrum. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, then, tell you what: if you are, if you have a, if you have a television in the middle of your home, mm-hmm. and you're, you just have inside work to do throughout the day, mm-hmm. not even vacuuming, because I wouldn't even want to be in the same room if this is on carpet anywhere. I don't want to be close to this. But if you're, 
if you have if you have uh, what is 117 minutes, put it on. Mm-hmm. Rarely look back, but every time you do, you'll be like, "What is going on with this?" But anyway, I s- go ahead, Patrick. They'd- Seal your own fate. Uh, yeah, <laughs> liquor store, good people. Good people, liquor store aisle. Uh, I got a Newcastle beer. Newcastle is, I think it's British, right? Um, but um, it's it's not bad. But I, I I'll t- and I'll take it. But I don't think I'll go out and buy it. So if you know, it, it's a good enough beer to drink. If somebody's like, "Hey, you want this?" I won't go like, "Oh no 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 no." I'll go like, "Yeah, I guess I'll drink it." But I'm not gonna, you know, rush out and go find something. You know, this just is something. It's like I right patched said. It's just an yeah. average, average beer. So, Adam, what about you, man? Um, I gave it like, uh, it's like someone offers you a, "Hey, man, you want a cherry vodka and Seven Up?" Yeah, 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 I'll, yeah. I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Sounds good. And then they you see what they're making it with, and then it's it's Burnett's cherry, which is bottom shelf college vodka. Ah. And then they give you, and they're like, ah, oh, I got here's some Sierra Mist. It's like, uh, it's not, uh, uh, you can't right. promise me something. Right. It's, it's, you started off with a good idea. I'll, I'll drink it. It's okay, but, you know. Yeah. False false advertising. False advertising. James yes. Franco. You false advertise me. Way to go, James Franco. Uh, But I think that's it, guys. This is a short one. In and out. Yeah. I mean, let's let's wrap docket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, docket master. Um, Man, I was I was because I got a really good one for next week, and then we got our weeks mixed up. But right. next week's gonna be a lot better. Well, you know what? With Papa Steve not here, it only makes sense to make a bad docket. I think I screwed up. I top heavy next week with good movies and not enough bad movies. I should have. Well, and you know what? We we explore Netflix because we may say something that, like Patrick said, he's like. You make this sound so bad, I kind of want to watch it. So even us saying, hey, man, this movie sucks. Some people may go, but I listened to what you said and went, maybe I'll watch it. So, again, all these movies are up to anyone who wants to watch. You know right, what I mean? Right. We're not we're not stopping anyone from watching the movies. We watch the movie. So somebody had to go through it. But either way, let's get off the fence, Adam, you and I. Um, uh, movie of the week. Uh... I'll probably go Middleman. I think Middleman had some made me laugh at points, and it, it was it was different. It was unique, right? So I'll, I'll go Middleman over all the rest okay. of them. Yeah. What about I'll, you? I'll do Good People mainly because I, 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 it was, was the, the closest ba- thing to a normal movie. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Patrick, if you could get off the fence, you're uh, which one are you going to pick? The Bird Watcher. You got it, man. Uh, good enough. Good enough for me. What about you, Adam? That's good for me. All right, guys, as we always say, we are on Facebook. We want you guys to be our friend, if you could. Uh, We have our shows popping up on there, I believe. Uh, We're on Twitter, at TheNetX, N-E-T-E-X, so uh, our our episodes uh, pop up up there, too. We're at the 1890 Studios. That is the 1890studios.com. We got a bunch of stuff up there. This stuff, we talk about VACAC. We talk about, you know... All kinds of jibber jabberish. Uh, so check out the glossary we got up there. Patrick's going to have a poll up there. We're going to have links to our merch. Um, if you guys want to support, that would yeah, it'd be great. Um, but I think that's it for us. I mean, we're on iTunes. If you guys want to get on Apple iTunes and subscribe and leave us a rating, that would be really cool. It helps us get seen. So we're moving up on Spreaker, a hosting site, and that's really exciting. And um, I mean, yeah, hop on Apple, do whatever you want to do. I don't care, wherever your favorite podcast player is. Um, but with that said, Patrick, I'm glad you got to the 1890 studio, man. You robbed them all, but we love to have you. I am just glad I got to participate this week. Oh, you're the man. And with in a jug of early times, you're always welcome. <laughs> it's never too early for, for early times. times. This podcast is brought to you by early times. <laughs> Adam, looking at you, brother, outstanding to sit across from you once again. As always, Dale, uh, I, me and Patrick were almost going to sit in different seats, and I was like, no. No, no, I, no. I got to sit across from Rusty. Flip it around. I got to look at him in the eye as he describes movies to me. <laughs> look at him in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, that's why I don't listen to the podcast. It's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> I got a picture of Dale to put across. Like. <laughs> <laughs> we got to change our logo to it's an Ernest Sackleton, just a picture of Dale, like in, a, <laughs> like in an Indiana Jones hat. <laughs> I was Indiana Jones for Halloween. I saw. Ah, good. What was Julie? Uh, she was uh, from, uh, what's her name, from uh, Temple of Doom. Oh, uh, 
Yeah, the, yeah and she had her medallion and everything oh, like look that. At she you had her movie dress. couple. Yeah. Uh, I was nothing. Well, you're a, you're a character in yourself. Adam. I went to the haunted house. Uh, what's that? The, the jail. It's like it's out in Illinois. Illinois. Uh, I've never heard of state, state prison. Penance. State prison. Oh, was it spooky? Yeah, that's all right. Except I'm too tall for haunted houses now. <laughs> so like all the guys working there, they're like six eight. They, so were, they weren't popping out, scaring me. They're the like spookiest person there. They're like, oh, watch your head. <laughs> like, I'm like, that's the real danger. Like, like the guys, like <laughs> yeah, the guys, like oh, you might be too tall for this. I don't know. Like, yeah. stop, stop giving me warnings about height and just right. scare me. The zombies are coming out, like making sure you're okay. Yeah, cut, cut, cut. Well, there we go. We had a little bit of lossage here. I think that's the podcast telling us to say uh, adios, and uh, we'll see you next week. I don't know where we lost it at. But that's how the podcast ends, everybody. This is, we do it live. Arriva Darchi. We'll see you next week. Do it live. The Panda Express without a fork because I couldn't. I forgot to grab a fork. Use your claws. I'd use my claws to eat Panda Express like a raptor. I know. <laughs> I'd even get rice. I got chow mein, <laughs> which is just like the dirtiest of all noodles. Yeah. <laughs>